Okay, so good afternoon. Uh, first of all, it is a pleasure to, to come here today to actually show what we have been doing in Telecommunication Institute and the University of Aveiro in terms of the Warner for this project. So my name is Nuno Carvalho and, and uh, with me I had João Milheiro working on this project. Well, very fast, uh, our Telecommunication Institute is a national laboratory. So for those that do not know us, we are uh, uh, spread all over the country. We are a private organization and uh, the, the headquarters of our lab is in the University of Aveiro. We are a not-for-profit organization and uh, we are an associated laboratory for the government of Portugal in the area of telecommunications. So uh, the group that has been uh, involved with this uh, development of this technology for this this um, activity uh, is the group of radio systems in the IT in the telecommunication institute and we cover a significant number of radio systems and radio circuit development design and uh, this includes uh, activities from software defined radio MIMO channel modeling RFID cognitive radio front ends wireless power transmission localization MMIC design and, and uh, quite broad uh, overcome of these activities we have of course working with us a significant number of so of master students PhD students and, and some postdoc uh, uh, researchers. Well, um, our RF lab in Aveiro, uh, I can say it's very well equipped, so we can measure RF signals up to 110 gigahertz. Uh, we have uh, several Hancock chambers. Actually, uh, we have at least two Hancock chambers up to 40 gigahertz. Uh, we can do measurements on ship up to 67 gigahertz. And we can do small prototyping for RF solutions, as you'll see today in our uh, pr proposal in our project in this in this system. Um, I I want to say also that uh, we have been engaged with several companies and and partners uh, over the last years, and um, uh, our idea is mainly to develop. Uh, solutions for radio transmission, either from wireless communications, mobile communications and others. And we have one goal all the time, which is to improve the energy efficiency of these systems and to maximize the efficiency of the overall solution. Um, and I, I will leave you here with three of the projects that we had been involved with, uh, with the industry to create microwave links for uh, wireless communications, to create um, uh, software-defined radio for CATV distribution, and more recently, working on a cloud radio access network for 5G, and we are now starting 6G approaches in these aspects. So. I don't have a lot of time, so I want to actually uh, explain you briefly what we have been engaged on. So this is uh, the block diagram of this project, um, which is Jose Pedro already presented very well. So I think um, uh, from all these uh, approaches here, uh, IT has been mainly focused on the uh, LSA Warner, and the, the, this block here was actually developed within the, the the institute so our lsa warner is mainly an lt detector and uh, it's an uh, lt detector in the sense that he has to actually identify if the spectrum is being occupied so he is doing some kind of spectral sensing in this uh, aspect but uh, we had to go a little bit further and we need to demodulate part of the lt uh, downstream because we really need to know what is the ID of the cell that is broadcasting. So um, uh, our initial approach was mainly a simple RF detector, uh, but then we understood that we had in this LSA Warner to actually identify how much bandwidth has been used, so what type of channel was being used and on top of that the id of that channel so that we can send this to uh, actually the uh, lsa repository so that we can take action based on this id so the lt detector as you can see here is composed of uh, um, 
uh, of a RF front end, analog front end. The RF front end then actually, I will show you later on, feed that signal to a FPGA design. So we did uh, uh, an approach from a, a digital perspective where we have our uh, initial demodulator and our initial evaluation of the signal. And then uh, uh, we receive this data. We receive also the GPS coordinate of this Warner. We uh, actually package that in a way that fair spectrum can receive that information in their database. And we use some kind of other type of data communication. It can be 2G, 3G, 4G, Wi-Fi, or uh, since the amount of information we are sending to the, um, to the repository is, 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 is not very uh, expressive, in, in, in the limit, we could use some kind of IoT network if it is available for, for this communication. And then, of course, this is uh, on the other side. So actually, uh, the LSA Warner includes three parts, the LTE uh, demodulator, so the, the, the part of the identification of what type of signal is there, the GPS coordinate of the uh, sensor, and also uh, package how to package all this and submit this to the uh, database. Uh, uh, let me also say that uh, I will show in the in the end of this presentation. But this uh, work was actually published in a, a, an important journal on IEEE. So this work is published on the IEEE Transactions of Vehicle Technology, which, from an academic point of view, and and I'm also a professor at the University of Aveiro. This is very important to actually make a contribution to the state of the art in terms of uh, scientific results. So let me very fast also go through the modules. So this was a first prototype, very simple prototype for spectral sensing. As you can see, there are some filters that were developed by us, low noise amplifiers, uh, oscillators. So this was actually one of the first detectors that we did, and we have uh, um, actually implement a front end from 2.3 and 2.4 gigahertz with including the amplifying stage, the filtering stage, and of course the limiter and our, uh, uh, the RF detector to identify that there is power at a specific frequency. Uh, then we move towards a more robust approach so actually we use what it's called a Pico Z software defined radio, where you can see here that we have a front end that actually is in this board. And on the bottom layer of this board, we have also the FPGA design. This is an evaluation board that we use as a first guess because this was mainly to create a prototype and uh, not at that moment some any kind of commercial product. So we actually use this uh, development kit for, for actually implementing our software defined radio for the LTE detector. So this, I don't want to bother you a little uh, significantly with, with the deep understanding of the technical aspect, but here you can see uh, how we actually developed our demodulator. It is completely developed under the digital part, and we have an OF OFDM um, demodulator to actually get not only the power, get the bandwidth and get the ID. And for getting the ID, we need to go a little bit deeper into the protocol so that we can get the ID of the LTE base station that was transmitting at that time. So um, as, as um, Zé Pedro already presented, uh, this was the final prototype. So here you can see that we have the antenna. Here we have the uh, analog RF front end, the digital front end, and then uh, we have a PC that is actually monitoring this and receiving the GPS coordinate the antenna for the GPS is there. So this was the final prototype that we put together. And uh, so that is quite compact in the sense that was possible to move it around and take it to the to the field without any uh, significant burden. Let me also say that uh, all this electronic was able to be powered by a, a power bank, the one similar to what we use for mobile phones. So it's it's quite easy to, to, to implement it and move it with them to, to the field. 
So here are only two snapshots of uh, the text that we did. Um, uh, this is one snapshot where we have the LTE and we have two uh, signals from the, the broadcasters. So from TVI and from RT. RTP and and here is there is a coexistence with LTE and we our Warner was able to identify that was an LTE uh, active despite we have the 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 signals the TV broadcaster signals here also so he was able to actually identify that and this is another situation where we have the the PMSC from TV is not actually covering all the band and uh, there is a, a, a higher band for the LT and again our uh, uh, Warner was able to identify that there was an LT um, emission aboard so that we can actually inform the, the, the database that there is an LTE active in this, in this GPS coordinate. So this is uh, also a, a snapshot of what we are sending to uh, spe um, fair spectrum uh, database. Uh, and this of course was a protocol that we developed in combination with fair spectrum and Anacom so that we can guarantee that we are sending the information that everybody really needs for uh, measuring and for activate uh, our uh, Warner in, in a current sense. And that is um, uh, compatible with all all the partners within this project. So as I said, and, and to finish my presentation, uh, we uh, actually published two papers on this uh, topic. One paper was published on the uh, IEEE International Symposium on Dynamic Spectrum Access Networks. The other paper, as I said before, was published on the transaction vehicular technology. And uh, I, I really think, as I said, from an academic point of view, this is a very good outcome. So uh, the, the project was not um, a simple, uh, let me say, development engineering project but actually it creates knowledge and creates advance in the state of the art. So this finished my talk um, and I'm open for questions at the end of this uh, panel. Thank you very much for listening.